On behalf of this House, I welcome the President of the Senate and honourable senators as guest to the sitting of the House of Representatives. We're gathering in this manner in order to hear an address via video link from His Excellency Mr Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. Welcome, Mr President. Do we have you, Mr. President? Mr President, on behalf of the Parliament of Australia, I am proud to be able to extend a very warm welcome to you from the House of Representatives Chamber as you join us from Ukraine. Now I invite the Honourable the Prime Minister of Australia and then the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition to make some welcoming remarks. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr President, Ukraine and Australia are separated by half the earth. Our languages, accents, histories and cultures are different, but we share an affinity for democracy, for freedom, freedom of speech, expression and a free press, for the right to leave, live free of coercion, intimidation and the brute fist of force, and a belief in our shared human dignity. Mr President, the people of Australia stand with Ukraine in your fight for survival. Yes, you have our prayers, but you also have our weapons, our humanitarian aid, our sanctions against those who seek to deny your freedom, and you even have our coal, Mr Speaker. And there will be more. Today I announce an additional package of defensive military assistance to assist in the defence of your homeland, including tactical decoys, unmanned aerial and unmanned ground systems, rations and medical supplies. Mr President, our pledge is that when freedom prevails, Australia will help the people of Ukraine rebuild as well. Here today, in the home of Australia's democracy, we welcome you, Mr President, as a lion of democracy. Yeah. We honour you and the incredible courage of your people whom you lead. We are witnesses to it with all of those around the world, as you call them, strong people of an indomitable country, and may that be so. We stand with you, Mr President, and we do not stand with the war criminal of Moscow, Mr President. I know that man, you know that man, we know that man, Mr Speaker, and we know his regime. We have seen them unleash unspeakable horror against your children, your hospitals and their shelters. And we remember the downing of a civilian airliner carrying 298 innocents, including 38 Australians, and we remember them also on this day. Yeah. In their name and in the name of 25 million Australians and their elected representatives, I welcome you, Mr President. I welcome you to our parliament. I welcome a great friend of Australia. I thank the Prime Minister. The the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Your Excellency, our parliament is honoured by your presence here with us and your address. You and the brave Ukrainian people are pushing back the tide of tyranny. For you to share precious minutes with us at a time like this is an act of profound generosity, and we thank you. 
What we see in Ukraine are terrible echoes of the devastation inflicted by Hitler's forces in World War II, a devastation that was felt by your own family. Vladimir Putin's aggression in the name of a poisonous nationalistic lie is abhorrent. Putin and the regime that enables him will be met with determination and escalating consequences if he continues to prosecute this illegal war. Putin's attempt to divide the West has drawn us closer together and strengthened our commitment to our shared values. Values that include the very freedom and sovereignty that rightfully belong to Ukraine. The Ukrainian people have known the cruelty of tyrants before. Those tyrants are gone, but Ukraine goes on. As you stand up to this latest tyrant, you are showing us what true courage is. Your Excellency, it is a courage that is embodied by you. You are fighting for your country and your people. You are fighting for your own family. We are here to hear, we are here to hear your words. So let me conclude with the words that resound amongst democratic and freedom-loving peoples the world over. Slava Ukraina. I thank the Leader of the Opposition, President Zelensky, Your Excellency. I now invite you to address members of the House of Representatives and Senators. You have our attention. You now have the floor. Leader of the opposition, ladies and gentlemen, members of the government, senators, and members of the parliament, the people of Australia, thank you for this honour to have this address today. In May 2016, thousands of Australians came to the city of Perth to see for the first time the Ukrainian plane Mria, or Dream as we call it. This was our plane, N-225. The Mria in English means Dream. Having travelled for almost 15,000 kilometres, it brought an urgent cargo, a power generator, 130 tonne. Um, which was very important to one of your companies. If they had to wait for the shipment uh, through the sea, it would have taken months. And Ukrainian plane has done in, in a couple of days. And we have always been proud of our dream, not because it was the largest, but because it was helping people in all countries of the world, bringing food, water, equipment for humanitarian and peacekeeping missions. In 2019, after the beginning of the COVID pa pandemics, our dream was bringing the most urgent medical cargo, things that were saving people's lives, adults and children, all over the world, in different countries. This, our dream was bringing life. Now this is not possible. This is not possible because there is a country which holds to completely different values, different from our values, from your values, from the values of the civilized war. And this country started a full-fledged war against us. They are shelling our cities and villages. They are killing our civilians and children. They are um, creating sieges of our cities and keeping and holding hostages of hundreds of thousands of people in these cities without water and food. They are abducting thousands of children that they transport to their territories. And on the 27th of February, as a result of fighting in the city of Kostomel, our plane, our dream, was destroyed. We can say that Russia destroyed our dream. No, they just burned down a plane, uh, hardware, 
a shell, but not the essence, not the freedom, not the dignity, nor our independence. We know that our dream is undefeatable and undestructed, especially if we can count on the support of the free world, on your support, on your assistance. And like in the history that I just told, we needed not just in a couple of months, but we need it urgently now. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Australia, the distance between our countries, as you said, is, is big, it's thousands of kilometers. We are separated by oceans, seas, and territories of uh, dozens of other countries and time zones, but there is no such thing as distance for the brutality and chaos that Russia brought to the east of Ukraine into the region of our Black Sea and Azov Sea to our Ukrainian land. Whatever is happening in our region because of the Russian aggression, what is destroying the lives of people, has become a real threat to your country and to your people as well, because this is the nature of the evil. It can instantly cross any distance, any barriers, destroy lives. For dozens of years there hasn't been this threat of nuclear attack as we have now because Russian representatives, officials, official propagandists, they are openly discussing the possibility of using nuclear weapons against those who don't want to subdue to Russian um, commands and for dozens of years it has never been that a country would block the whole sea for other vessels of any country but this is exactly what was done by Russia part of the black and Azov sea as uh, is a dead sea these days any vessel that we try to come in can simply be destroyed by the Russian Navy more than hundreds of trade uh, vessels under different flags have been blocked by Russia in our ports. For dozens of years we haven't seen this in the world for a country to start the war against the neighboring country openly declaring their enslavement or destruction not to leave even the name of that nation, not to have even any opportunity for this nation to leave to live freely. The worst pages of the 20th century have been brought back by Russia already. The biggest threats of that century came back. The evil that humanity thought they had forgotten about a long time ago. But the most terrible thing, if we don't stop Russia now, if we don't hold Russia accountable, then some other countries of the world who are looking forward to the similar war against their neighbors will decide that such things are possible for them as well. The fate of the global security is decided now. No one can manage winds or precipitations. It means no one can save any part of the world from radioactive contamination which will come if uh, nuclear weapons are used. No country in the world can theoretically should not have the even a theoretical possibility of blocking um, trade fleet and block the seas for other countries. There shouldn't be even a theoretical possibility to do so. No leader of the world can count on being unpunishable if he's thinking about a prospective war. Ladies and gentlemen, the nation of Australia, after the more than a month of the full-fledged war against uh, Russia, we can surely say that there is no only way of bringing the global security as bringing Russia to peace and silence and responsibility and accountability for everything that Russia has done against the global security. The country which is using the nuclear blackmailing should receive the sanctions which would show that such blackmailing is destructive for the blackmailer itself. There has to be an effective toolkit to hold responsible any country which is blocking 
the trade navigation so for no one to have a temptation to close any sea and making the Dead Sea out of them. So far, we don't have such instruments. So the leadership, the leadership of Australia can be paramount for the global security, which is now strengthened, but our anti-war coalition, which is working on bringing the war of the peace back to Ukraine. We need to also enhance the, the capabilities of the international institutions, which were created to hold um, military war criminals responsible and anyone who would commit such crimes to have them punished by the solidarity of the whole world and not one country. Had this been done on time, on a timely manner, the life in this world would have been more secure, times more secure. And I'm sure that any of you, any of us, rem uh, remembers the MH17 tragedy, the Malaysian Boeing that was uh, shot down by Russian occupants under the Don over the Donbass Sea. 290 people died at that time, and my condolences to all those who have lost their relatives and their kins. But did we manage to hold accountable those who caused this tragedy? No, they are hiding in the territory of Russia. And obviously, they've got uh, security guarantees from Russia. Has Russia paid the compensation to the dead and their families? No. And they are still denying their fault in this strategy. Eight years later, the justice was not uh, achieved. And we don't know how much longer it, it will take for at least one tragedy to have a proper response from international community, from all of us, and how many new tragedies Russia has created or will create. So the unpunished evil comes back. And I would say unpunished evil come back with, with inspiration with uh, the feeling of almightiness. If the world has had punished Russia in 2014 for what it did, there wouldn't be any of these terror of invasion in Ukraine in 2022. We have to correct such horrible mistakes and correct, correct them now. The bipartisan support of Australia, of Ukraine, for the support that has been provided, we are extremely grateful. 70,000 tons of coal for our energy. But this is only the beginning. Together, we, should, we can and should do more. We need m new sanctions against Russia, powerful sanctions, until they stop blackmailing other countries with their nuclear missiles. And they have to pay the highest price for blocking the sea. No Russian vessel should be allowed in other international ports. Buying their oil means paying for the destruction of the global security. We have to stop any business activity of Russia. Any dollar should be spent for the destruction of the people. No single dollar for the destruction of the um, global security. And we have to stop any intention of Russia to bypass the sanctions. So what kind of sanctions? are those if you can bypass by using simple uncunning scheme, uh, schemes but most of all you we have to keep those who are fighting against this evil armed for the evil to be looking for for peace and this has to be decided on the battlefield for example you have very good armed personal um, vehicles Bushmaster that could help Ukraine substantially and other pieces of equipment that could uh, strengthen our position in terms of armament. So if you would have an opportunity to share this with us, we would be very grateful. In Ukraine, this they will do much more for our common freedom, our common security than staying uh, parked on your land. So 
Ukrainian people have demonstrated to the whole world of how much we appreciate the freedom and how committed are we to the protection thereof. Our heroes are fighting against the army, which is considered one of the strongest in the world. But all our people, without exception, already are thinking about the future, about how we are going to live, live after the war, about restoring our country, our Black Sea region, and we invite prominent countries of the world, leading companies and the best experts to join the project of restoration of Ukraine, to take the city or the sector under your auspices that would require restoration. Our, your country has provided a special status, a like-minded country, and we are like-minded not only in our thoughts but also in our longing for peace. So I would like to invite and welcome your country to have a look at our southern regions, at our um, Azov and the Black Sea uh, shore, the development of such ports and cities like the city of Kherson, which is now fighting for its freedom, the rebuilding of the uh, naval sector in, in Ukraine could, could also be a great contribution in the restoration after the war with the protection of the free um, naval trading would, would be a big contribution because those who can protect freedom in the sea can protect it in the world. And I am sure, and I believe that you can do it, and I am sure that our Ukrainian community will join this common work of ours and that it will support us as strong as they have done it in the past. Dear friends, the geographical distance between us is huge, thousands of, um, of kilometers, but what does this distance mean for those who have a common understanding, who see the world with the same vision, uh, for those who is similarly hurting what is happening when the enemy comes, when children are killed, when cities are destroyed, when the refugees are shot at on, on the highways, when Ukraine is turned into the burned out territory, then any distances disappear. Geography doesn't matter then. What matters is humanity and the dream. The dream of bringing back the peaceful life. The dream that we are that we will implement, indeed, together. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. Slava Ukraini. President, on behalf of the House and the Australian Don't Parliament, please. I want to thank you for your address. Over recent days, we in this Parliament have debated the situation in Ukraine, and of course we've been shocked and horrified by the images from across your country. Today you've added to our understanding with your powerful words about your experiences and the experiences of your people and the tragic situation in your country. It is apparent that you and your fellow Ukrainians have faced this challenge with great courage. We acknowledge and admire your strong leadership. On behalf of this parliament, we wish you well for the future. Our prayers are with you and the people of Ukraine. The chair will be resumed at the ringing of the bells.